So is this the best value for money, non-peated, non-sherried whiskey you can buy? Well, today we've got a great contender, the Glen Caddam 10. So I'm Phil, welcome to First Phil, and I'm gonna fill you in about this whiskey. So this here is the entry level whiskey from the Glen Caddam Distillery and it's a 10 year old. This distillery is located in the southern eastern part of the Highlands which makes it a Highland whiskey. So Glen Caddam opened in 1825 which if you watch my History of Scotch video was actually a really good time to start a distillery because that's when whiskey was legalised on like a big scale and a lot of distilleries started around then. And Glen Caddam is owned by Angus Dundee, which is actually quite a small owner compared to some of the big owners like Diageo and Puna Ricca, because they only actually own two distilleries. They own the Tomatau, which is a distillery in the Speyside region, and the Glen Caddam distillery. So at Glen Caddam, they have two pot stills, which have this sort of unusual thing about them which is that the light pipes, which is on top of the still, run at an angle of about 15 degrees. And what the distillery says it does, is it gives them a mellow character, which gives you more aromatic notes, more fruity notes, and more sweet notes. So up until recently, I probably would have said this was an underrated whiskey, and I think I have in a lot of my other videos. But it's starting to get more attention, especially with Aquavita in one of his videos, calling this a hero whiskey, meaning that it gets everything Right. Also recently, it was hyped up even further because it was nominated for the Oswiz, the Online Scotch Whiskey Awards. Yeah, it's great to see that this whiskey is finally getting more attention. And one of the good things about the Glen Caddam is that they don't normally do big sherry bombs, they don't do big peat bombs, which is not bad, but it means that they can't hide bad spirit. The spirit has to be good. It can't be cut blanketed over by all the sherry notes and all the smoky notes. They have to rely on the whiskey itself being great and that's hard to pull off. But is the spirit actually good? Well let's jump in to the stats. And you probably heard this word going around on YouTube channels integrity bottling. This whiskey is an integrity bottling. Well, what does that mean? Well, it's kind of set up by Ralphie and it's kind of been echoed around the whiskey tube verse, whatever it is, where basically it's, is the ABV over 46%? That means there's more flavor. Is it unchill filtered? That also means is they're not taking all the oils out and there's more flavor. I've done a whole video on that if you want to know more about that. And is it natural color or have they added coloring to it? Believe it or not, whiskeys often add coloring to the whiskey to make it look golden and stuff. So, you know, a lot of people go buy a whiskey and they go, wow, it must be good because it's got all this color in it. But actually it's fake. It's just coloring. So be careful of that. But this whiskey, how does it stand up amongst those integrity standards? So first of all, ABV. Well, the ABV on this one is 46%. So one stamp of approval for the ABV, unchill filtered. This is unchill filtered. And in fact, it says it on the label. Another stamp for the Glen Caddam 10. And is it colored? Well, this one says no added color. So we know this is natural color. This is the color that the whiskey came out of the cask and hasn't been tampered with. So another stamp of approval for the Glen Caddam 10. Fantastic work, Glen Caddam. Great stuff. So let's talk about the cask and the age. So this one is aged in X bourbon barrels. Um, I don't think it's aged in anything else, like reef or sherry butts or anything, but if you do know, put it in the comments below, fill me in. Also, it's a 10 year old, so look, this is not gonna be an advanced drink. It's not gonna be, you know, some overly super complex. This is an entry level, easy, go-to daily drinker dram. And it's not trying to be anything else beyond that. And also, it gets a bonus point. As <laughs> The bonus point is an age statement, and that is on the label. I think the more information we can get on the label or on the box, the better it informs us. It informs us what we could expect from the whiskey. So good work, Link Adam. You're hitting all the points on this one. So the next point is the bottle design and a lot of people think well it's not even about the bottle design it's about the smell and taste and yeah I agree like the vast majority of what a whiskey should be should be the smell and taste but one little kind of pushback of that is that I think whiskey is a little bit different than say you know a cheap Budweiser in the fridge 
because you know it's like it's a little bit more expensive not everyone has heaps of money to buy heaps of whiskies and it's something that you can put on show you can put on cabinet so I think the design does play a part there's the emotional side there's the theatrical side so how does this one rank up well I think look there's nothing wrong with this bottle it has as we said before it has all the right information on it it tells you everything you need to know um, in terms of design I do think there's probably better designs out there, there's probably more creative designs out there, but I think the really good thing about it is there's no over-marketing, it's not like trying to be some intense Viking bottle or I don't know, something like that. So yeah, it's, it's got all the points for the integrity, it tells you what you need for a whiskey lover, could probably be a bit more creative. So I'm gonna give this one a B plus. It's a fine looking bottle. Well, enough talking about it, let's drink a little bit of it. Oh, so first of all, the nose. Mmm. Oh, ho, 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 ho. So it's got some really nice white fruit notes like pears, nectarines, uh, red apple. And then it's got some like unripe banana. There's some citrusy notes. Um, there's like some, yeah, some lemony. It's almost like a lemon cheesecake. Yeah, so this is a very spirit forward malt, which as I said before, is great because if this was a sherry bomb, if this was a smoke bomb, a lot of these delicate, soft notes you probably wouldn't pick up. And sort of beyond those white fruit notes, you're getting some of the more the malty notes, the oak notes. So uh, in particular, like the crust of a lemon cheesecake, you're getting sort of a French bread crust, uh, you're getting sort of a honey covered oats, and you're getting some of those buttery notes and those vanilla -y notes as well. So onto the palate. Oh, oh, it's lovely. It's got a really nice arrival. It's got that sort of sweet and sour, a really nice balance. And maybe that's where all the right fruit kind of thoughts and ideas are coming from. I think what's quite good about this whiskey is because it's at 46%, it means a lot of those flavors are still popping out. There's still a little bit of kick, but not too much. It's, you know, it's still soft, delicate whiskey. Whereas I think if this was a 40% whiskey, this would be flat, you know, like this would, it'd be, it'd be boring because I think those flavors wouldn't be able to punch through. Yeah, so excellent palette on this one. And the finish. Hmm. Well, it's just, it's just so crisp, you know, it's got that, it's sort of bitter, and it ends up getting a bit sweeter. A little bit like a Chardonnay, actually. You've got a little bit of butter, butteriness coming through. But a lot of those uh, little kind of light lemony notes coming through as well. Really nice. Decent finish. I'm still tasting it right now. Um, so I'd say, yeah, this is probably a medium finish. So what are my thoughts on this whiskey? Well, first of all, we need to look at the value and value plays a big part of the score for this one. This is fantastic value. In fact, it prices around the same price point as many other 10 year olds that are bottled at 40%. Whereas this is bottled at 46%, so you're getting more bang for your buck, you're getting more flavor for this whiskey, which is fantastic. But I have seen online that some markets it's more expensive. And I think if that's the case, if it's kind of starting to get outside your budget, maybe look into the Aaron 10, which is a slightly sweeter whiskey, or look into the Deanston 12, which is slightly maltier whiskey, and see how they compare in price and then make your decision based on that. So secondly is the availability. So this is available in only one of the three kind of big whiskey stores in New Zealand. So I'd say it's kind of moderate at the moment. I feel like it used to be kind of better, but as the hype's gone up, it's maybe not as available. So I think if you can get a bottle, get one. And next one is reachability. Reachability is important because often you can have a really good whiskey, but that doesn't mean you're always reaching for it out of the cabinet. Like where does it rank in terms of reachability? This one, for me, very reachable. I'm always reaching for this. It's a great kind of go-to Friday night dram. I just want a really good scotch that's got the both maltiness, got the fruitiness, and I know I'm just gonna enjoy the whiskey regardless of my mood. So the next point is who's it for? Well, this whiskey plays a really good dance. It's a great dance between, it's a whiskey that I would give to people who haven't drunk much whiskey before. Uh, I think it's a great approachable dram. It's an easy dram. 
But on the other side, I actually think there is a bit of complexity to it. So this is also a great dram for people who are you know, drink a lot of whiskey, have decent whiskey collections. So it's got this really good kind of double thing going on, which is quite rare to see in a whiskey, which I really like, you know, it's soft, but it's complex, it's approachable, but it's not boring. This whiskey is probably one of my top three 10 year old go-to whiskies. It's fantastic. I think every whiskey drinker should try it. And this is coming from someone, I love my peat bombs. I love my sherry bombs. And I don't normally lean towards these kind of more lighter whiskies, but I do lean to this. It's fantastic. The spirit is very good spirit. And one I would always have on the shelf. And when this whiskey runs out, I'll definitely be out there buying another one just because of how much I enjoy this whiskey. And what you've been waiting for, what is the score I'm gonna give this whiskey? Well, I just wanna say one thing first. See, a lot of reviews of this whiskey online, the scores vary quite a lot. And I think it's because there's a difference in the way people review this whiskey. I think some people just review it in terms of smell and taste overall, compare it to every other whiskey they've ever tried, and how does that rank up? Other people go the smell, the taste, plus the value. How much does it actually cost? Look, there's gonna be a lot of other whiskies that are 10 times the price, and I'm sure they're gonna be better. But I'm gonna do the latter. I think value does play a part. If it's a good, decent price, it means it's available for you guys. I wanna recommend whiskies that you guys can actually buy and are accessible to you. So that's gonna push the score up, which means this whiskey is going to get a 90 out of 100. Fantastic dram, good work Glen Kadam. This is an excellent bottle. What do you guys think about it? Have you had this? How would you rate it? Is it a good whiskey? Would you recommend it to others? I'd love to hear those comments down below. And if you like this video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe, hit the bell, and also a special thanks to my patrons who have made this review possible. But above all, make sure you share and enjoy beauty.